Are you watching what's happening in Europe with immigration and refugee issues? They are experiencing a mess that is beyond repair. Americans are concerned, and rightfully so, about who we are importing into our country and the ramification of their presence in our communities. Here's a shocker. Do you know that it is the United Nations Commission on Refugees who decides which refugees come to America? Yeah, you heard it correctly. They work with the State Department, who then works with nine federal contractors, six of them are religious organizations, Christians and Jews, to resettle the refugees at the cost of $1 billion, not counting extra benefits like welfare. And where is this money coming from? Your pocket, the Treasury Department. The federal contractors use subcontractors to spread the refugees throughout America. Once they bring one refugee in, the process starts all over again to bring their extended family. It's a cash cow and everyone is jumping on the do-good wagon because of the millions of dollars they stand to make. To give you an idea, Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service is 95% funded by your tax dollars. Their revenue for 2014 was 59 million and some change. Almost 57 million came out of your pocket. The U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, Migration and Refugee Services is the largest private refugee resettlement agency in the U.S. In 2014, they brought in $85 million and some change. 82 million came from your pocket. We are literally paying good money to import bad problems Europe is already experiencing, such as sexual assault, terrorism, infectious diseases, and a clash of culture and values because most of the refugees we are importing are Muslims. Six states already in America reported cases of rape and sexual assault. Massachusetts, Idaho, Virginia, Utah, California, and North Dakota. While we see these cases as heinous attacks, they are often justified in the culture where they came from. Child marriages, child rape, child prostitution, especially the sexual abuse of little girls and women. When refugees are confronted, they say it is sanctioned in their culture and religion. Refugee cities have also become hubs for illnesses, such as highly infectious bacterial diseases, like active tuberculosis, that were once controlled, now mushrooming all over America. Colorado has 16 cases, Ohio 11 cases, Vermont 35, Wisconsin 117 cases. Most of them are drug resistant, which means it cost us, the taxpayers, 150,000 per case, and it takes six to eight months to treat them. Florida, 11 cases, Idaho, seven, Indiana, four, Kentucky, nine, and North Dakota, four cases. Refugee resettlement is not about humanitarianism, but about supplying cheap labor. Most refugees are on welfare of some sort, which makes anyone employing them eligible for the Federal Work Opportunity Tax Credit. An employer has a greater incentive to hire a refugee whose salary is subsidized by the taxpayer instead of hiring a struggling American. The food processing, meat packing, manufacturing, and the hotel industry are enjoying cheap labor at the expense of the U.S. taxpayer and cultural and social upheaval. It's companies like Chobani Yogurt, Tyson Foods, and Chipotle, just to name a few. So don't fall for the humanitarian mumbo-jumbo. Refugee resettlement is an industry driven by the importation of cheap labor and potential votes. Please cut the baloney and the expense. Now let's talk about importing terrorism. We have at least had 10 cases of refugee Islamic terror arrests or convictions right here in America. Both Boston bombers, the Tsarniyev brothers were refugees. Bombings in Manhattan and New Jersey were committed by a refugee. A Somali refugee went on a stabbing rampage at a Minnesota mall. Another one stabbed dozens on the Ohio State campus, to name a few. If the five top rich Islamic countries of the world led by Saudi Arabia have not let refugees in because they are afraid of importing terrorism, then why are we? 
When are we going to stop being suicidal with our population? Act for America is facing this issue head on, mobilizing citizens nationwide to stop this insanity by working legislatively on the state and federal level to protect your community. Join us, become a member. If you see value in the work we are doing, I would be most grateful for your financial support. Please share this important message with every freedom-loving friend you know. Together, we rise in defense of our security, our country, and our values.